U.S. universities are now deciding how and when to reopen in the fall and whether or not to have in-classes where students actually turn up or whether it should all be online. If it is online, then that has implications, of course, for those overseas students who may then have to leave the United States. There are many issues to talk with Martha Pollock. Cornell is preparing for on-campus learning, and Martha Pollock is the president of Cornell University. Joins me from Ithaca in New York via Skype. Madam President, thank you uh, for, for being with me. So, um, first of all, how many students do you now think, or what percentage of classes do you think you will be able to have in person next fall? Well, we're still working that out, but when we did a survey for our faculty a few weeks ago, about a third said they wanted to teach in person, about a third said they were preparing to teach online, and a third were still deciding. So it's going to be somewhere between one and two thirds in person. Now, the implications for those overseas students who if they're only enrolled in online classes, how are you supporting them and are you joined in the fight against the administration over this? Yeah, yes, we absolutely are. We partnered with 58 other universities in the amicus brief, uh, along with the, that M in the case that MIT and Harvard are putting forward. We believe at this moment that because we are having this hybrid education, uh, that most of our students will not be affected by this, at least not to the extent that they would have to leave the country, but it could cause them to have to choose different classes, say, than those that are best for their education. There are just a range of really terrible outcomes that could happen. And we are absolutely partnered, as I say, with 58 other major institutions of higher university in fighting this, this really uh, unprecedented and hard to understand decision. It's also, I mean, it is extraordinary that at the, at the time when people need assistance most, uh, support and what they're doing, that the rug was pulled out from underneath them on this immigration question. Uh, do you expect to lose many students because of it, if any? Uh, we hope not. We hope not. As I say, because of our going back with right. online and in-person courses, we don't believe it will affect them. But it is. it will be a problem for other universities if the decision is not overturned in the courts, for sure. And on the actual situation, you're making plans for some uh, uh, in-person learning, but it's yeah. a, at best they can be tentative in the sense that a resurgence of the virus, such as in Florida or elsewhere, would have you rethinking things all over again. No, that's right. That's right. And that is one of the problems with this ruling is that all of us right. have worked extraordinarily hard to put in place plans uh, based on the best public health that we understand. But you're right. Things could cause us to have to change. We've got to be nimble. We've got to be willing to change if the situation gets much, much worse. And, and to those people who say, well, you, for the, you should lower your tuition. You're familiar with the argument. We're not getting yes. full classes. We're not getting full in-person classes. A Zoom tutorial is not the same thing, uh, but you're still charging full whack. Yes. Well, we are working extraordinarily hard to provide the best education we possibly can. As I say, many of our classes will be in person. We're standing up safe alternatives for extracurricular activity. And in fact, we're spending an enormous amount of extra money to have the right. safest possible experience. In addition, in addition, we meet the full financial aid of our need of our students and the need of our students is going up enormously. That's the biggest financial hit that we're going to take next year because so many families have seen economic economic displacement. So it's costing us a lot to stay open, to stay open to all of our students across the socioeconomic spectrum and provide them with the best possible education we can. Uh, President Pollock, very grateful for your time this afternoon. Busy time for you and I'm grateful that you took some of it to give to us. Thank you.